Hi, this is Kyle Koberlein with Bluegrass International in Georgetown, Kentucky. Today, I just want to talk quickly about what I think are the, my personal top five favorite things about the new International S13 powertrain. Uh, I had an actual engine, a transmission, and an after-treatment system in front of me, and so I'm just going to point out a few things and show you guys what I think. I got this uh, really neat wandy thing. Check this out. I want one of these for myself. I stole this from the instructor. but. Uh, so the first thing I really want to point out, I think what really separates this engine globally from the competition is the fact that if this is, an, this is our EGR valve right here, and what you will notice that is missing, there is no EGR cooler. So what's really new about this technology and what's really making this engine stand apart is the fact that we want this engine to burn hot. We want it to burn clean as far as soot and particulate, but we are creating higher levels of nitrous oxides but we can control that with DEF or diesel exhaust fluid after the fact. So essentially what to me what's important is the fact that we are not putting tons of soot back through the motor. That soot is not running through your turbo. That soot is just it's not gumming up components like we a lot of your engines are in the past or engines that are available from competition today. My second favorite thing about this engine that we've changed is that we've gone to a fixed make sure I cut in the frame here, that we have a fixed turbo. Uh, you, because of it being a fixed turbo, there is no turbo actuator. That is a, I'm sure if anybody is familiar, uh, does a lot of maintenance on their vehicles or has a larger fleet, that is a common repaired part. That actuator takes a lot of abuse. They do fail. They're not cheap. This does not have an actuator. Uh, this is your turbo wastegate. Uh, but it does not have an actuator. So this is a super simple design. It's a single shaft. You can't really get any more basic when it comes to a turbo on an engine. This engine does not have a DOC, a diesel oxidation catalyst, and it also, so when you come out of the, you're coming out for your exhaust here on the engine, this is what I would kind of call like a uh, swirler. It's swirling the exhaust because the first time we des desk, the first time that we dose, uh, def into the system is right behind here um, and so that is mixed in with the exhaust here to help control those nitrous, oxi nitrous oxide levels that are now elevated or NOx for short um, and then we do dose def again if needed downstream and I will show that um, now what's really neat and what we're not doing here is there is not what we call the seventh injector we are not injecting diesel into the exhaust stream because our engine is burning hot already, we can maintain, and we're not creating near the soot we were before, we can maintain enough heat in the exhaust system just with engine heat by opening up this EGR valve to keep that system clean and burning hot. Um, the EGR valve, you know, the reason we had to have an EGR, because we don't have a cooler, but we do have an EGR valve, is for this engine to run optimally, it needs to run hot. And so, a perfect example of this is startup. So when you go to start this engine up at cold, obviously we're going to put that exhaust back into the engine to get those temperatures up to where they need to be. Uh, we want to maintain exhaust temperatures of 600 degrees to keep the after treatment system happy. The oh, we'll go to the other side here. So we'll talk about you know this is kind of a large topic and covers a lot of things but overall serviceability international did a great job of keeping this engine extremely simple and easy to work on and simple for the technicians um, for example like here this is your fuel gotta make sure i got my frame here this is your fuel filter even when this engine is on the chassis it's extremely easy to get to you pull this up this unscrews you pull this up this pops out and another thing that's super neat is down in there there's basically like a little check valve you can kind of see it down in there and when you pull this out the fuel actually drains out of that housing so it makes it less of a mess for the technician next to it on the left is your oil filter it does the exact same thing you pull this oil filter out you look down in there it's got a check valve what's well, got a check valve actually on the filter housing itself and it dr drains itself out for less mess. And then when you're putting these components back in, you know, it's pretty simple and you can't really put them in wrong. The little nub there has to go down in the hole, down the bottom for it to line up properly. It will not go in if you don't do it correctly. I mean, unless you try to manhandle it really well. Same thing with this filter. You can see that there's two tabs on it. And you can see how it's slotted 
down in here, right there. So you can't you can't put this filter in wrong either. Unless you, of course you could try hard, I guess. Some people do impress us with their ability to break stuff. And then on the front, is, you know, we back on the line with serviceability is access to your thermostat. Once again, it's on the front of the engine, easy to get to. This pops off, and your thermostat pulls right out. So pretty slick. That pops right back down in there, and then your cat goes over it. And then we'll continue on with the kind of the serviceability aspect. Oh, and I forgot to mention on the fuel filter. So I said that that drains the fuel so that when you're changing out your filter, well, the low pressure fuel pump, which is right, I lost it. It is right. Oh, right here. Low pressure. Number one is low pressure fuel pump, right? Lewis. Or Luis, I'm sorry. Oh, you're good. Uh, this is your low pressure fuel pump right here, right? Clearly not a technician. I'm doing my best here. Yeah, that's the uh, pump to where it'll pump everything. Yeah, yeah, so so looks so, a manual yeah, yeah, yeah. Do it. yeah, so that's your low pressure fuel pump. Um, and so you'll notice there's no manual pump to prime the system. This is electronically driven by a, a motor and primes this system when you turn the key. So no manually pumping to prime your fuel system. Thanks, Luis. Uh, so we talked about that. If you go over to the transmission and we're talking about serviceability, you know, once again, the, the filter for the transmission is right here at the bottom, easy to access. And then if we jump over to the emission system, you know, this is your particulate filters are down here at the bottom. Uh, if you're getting over 8.2 miles to the gallon, the service interval is 650,000 miles. The minimum service interval is 450,000 miles. Is that right? Am I saying the truth over here? 450, yes, I'm correct. That, um, that's Matt. He's our service rep from Navistar over here beside me. Uh, and then this hole here, which houses the particulate filter, faces out from the truck. So you don't actually have to drop this unit to get those filters out if that is necessary. So once again, super serviceable. And then the last thing I'll mention to keep this video from getting way too long, because I just want to talk about my top five, right? I mean, we could talk, I did four hours on this engine yesterday, and we just, just barely touched the surface. Um, but the fact that our fuel efficiency numbers uh, yeah. to date, do, with testing from what we have seen, we're ranging on this engine somewhere between five to nine percent better fuel economy than our competition, depending on you know who it is. I'm definitely not going to name no names. That's not fair. But you know, and we would love to, you know for our customers to come, experience, uh, talk to us about this engine. You know, take one for a test drive because you know you can see and feel their performance how well it drives how well it shifts all for yourself and it really does speak for itself once again my name is kyle coberline i'm a truck part of the truck <laughs> i struggle with this i'm the sales director at bluegrass international but i don't like that title that much um, i'm just part of the sales team we all support each other we work together as a team uh, we're here to support our customers you know we're more of consultants than salespeople. We, you know we're trying to create value create solutions for our customers that, tr that truly make you happy that you're doing business with us but i appreciate you watching another one of my videos and look forward to what we put together for the future